Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I get questions all the time about lithium iron phosphate charging, best ways to charge it, alternative methods to charge it, charging from lithium to lead acid, lead acid to lithium, alternator charging, all these kinds of questions. So I'm gonna to try to help answer some of those questions today with the assistance of this Power Queen 40 amp DC to DC battery charger. This unit right here is packed full of features, very impressive list of specifications and capabilities. So I'm gonna be putting it through all of its paces today, testing it out, sharing my thoughts on it. And so let's jump right into it and get started. Now, full disclosure, I contacted Power Queen and requested this sample so I could film it and test it for you folks out there uh, watching my videos. Uh, Power Queen politely requested that in order for me to get a sample of their unit that I make a purchase of another one of their products and they would include the charger with my purchase. So I purchased one of their 500 amp shunts and battery monitor kits and I'll be going over this in an upcoming video as well. But just so you know, I did make a purchase so I could receive this to show you folks. So let me show you what you get with this unit before I start connecting wires and setting up for our testing, things like that. So you get a nice comprehensive user manual, shows you wiring diagrams, where everything hooks up to, how to hook it up, different specifications, limits on voltages and currents and things like that. So very good user manual on this unit. It comes with extra Anderson SB50 connectors because this unit uses Anderson SB50 connections to connect to it. Very nice heavy duty connectors and I like Anderson connectors. Comes with mounting hardware to mount it to a wall or to your RV or your 12 volt power systems or whatever you're using it on. So very, very good, ready to use out of the box. Just make you up some wires and put some circuit protection on there and you're good to go. Uh, Multi-chemistry with reverse charging. That means if your starter battery went dead and your service or house batteries were full in your RV, you could reverse charge back to your starter battery. All kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to go over everything in this video, but just a nice unit, lightweight, compact. So let me hook up some wires and we'll start testing it. So I've got some wire leads made up for the Power Queen DC to DC charger. I use my Windy Nation cable. I use some six gauge Power Flex. I've got the starter battery lead made up right here, a sample lead, a service battery or house battery lead right here. Going, it's gonna go to lithium. And then my PV lead, I went ahead and just used six gauge on it as well. And I'm not gonna use circuit protection for this test. It's a bench top test to get some readings. But if you're installing this in a permanent location or unattended, you would want to use proper overcurrent protection. There's the leads, there's the charger. I'm gonna bring a lead acid in here. I've got some lithiums right here. I've got them covered up out of respect for Power Queen. I'm burning some energy off so you may hear the inverter come on. So pulling load out of that so I can dump some charge to it. And we're gonna play a back and forth charge game with this charger, take some readings. So let me get finished setting up. All right, so here's the setup. Don't let all the wiring confuse you. I will go over everything. This is a 200 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery bank right here, which would be your service battery or house battery in this system setup. So I've got leads going to that battery. I've got PV leads coming in. Now this unit has a max PV input of 26 volts at 600 watts. So I've reconfigured uh, some of my panels from series back to parallel to use the PV input on this charger. And I have a 12 volt lead acid battery right here, a flooded battery. I've got a charge controller coming to it to simulate an alternator because this is how this is supposed to work. Uh, this is what is recommended for RVs and things. You alternator is charging your lead acid, then the DC to DC charger is charging through to your lithium iron phosphate bank or other battery bank of your choice because it's got multi chemistry selections and of course reverse charging. So, you know, if you just run this one down, you can take from your service bank and charge back to here. So I'll demonstrate all that. First step is to take your service battery or house battery bank and connect it first to energize the unit. And the service battery or house battery on this one, as you can see, is the yellow lead coming out or output. And then this is our service battery, which is lithium. So I'm going ahead and plug that in right there. That's going to power up the DC to DC charger. And for our battery top, we're not using lead acid. We're going to go over here, long press, select lithium iron phosphate, then hold the button. And that confirms our selection. So we have no charge stats or anything like that right now. So I've got the lead acid battery right here. I'm going to commence the alternator charging on that, if you will. You should see the voltage start coming up on the lead acid because here goes the solar charge controller. 
to the lead acid, which is simulating an alternator. There we go. Our lead acid voltage is coming up similar to an alternator. And speaking of alternators, this setup right here, it would be perfect for a traditional alternator. You've got a smart alternator. You use this little accessory wire, which none of my vehicles have smart alternators. So if I was to hook it up, it'd be just like this right here, except in a car instead of on a bench. So I do not need to use this wire, but it accepts from 12 to 24 volt alternators. So you have a wide operating range. So there are lead acid battery is coming up it's at 14 volts it's working its way up got some clouds and stuff coming in so you'll see the voltage vary a little bit right there okay so the lead acid is charging similar to you know an alternator being on so now we'll take the starter battery lead right here which is the red lead with the red anderson i'll plug that together and now it should pick up our charging status right there and we're charging the lithium battery bank you can see the voltage drop down right here so let's check and see what the lithium bank is coming up to 13.25, 13 13.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.28. So yes, charging the lithium bank that's sitting right there, which is very nice. You can see the voltage is flatlining on this lead acid. The solar panels connected to this. We're in full clouds now, cannot keep up with what this is drawing, but this should shut off. So this will be a good demonstration of the low voltage cutoff on the DC to DC charger. Then as this battery recovers back up to 13 volts, it should start charging again. So the actual technical spec on this is 11.3. It stops pulling charge uh, to send to your service battery bank. And at 13 volts, it initiates charging again. So let's see if that's accurate. Initiate charging again in just a moment. Boom, right on the money. 13 volts, starts charging again. And of course the PV is not keeping up. Your alternator would, but the PV is not. So we're gonna drag it back down and it should disable charging again. Wait for it. I'll disconnect the PV this time to see exactly what it drops out at. It looked like it did 11.4 that past time, so I'll drop it and see if we can catch it. So now time for the PV test. Like I said, I reconfigured an array I've got to bring it down to about 20 volts open circuit. So I'll plug the PV in. All right, PV is connected. And let's uh, simulate we shut our engine off. We're parked. All right, the engine is off. We have no alternator input, so it should take over on solar input, which it did. Solar charging, charging. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's working just like it should. So then at nighttime, if you don't have any PV, you want to crank up your, your engine or what have you, let's simulate that. We just crank the truck back up or the RV. Disabled solar should go back to lead acid charging off the alternator. That's pretty slick. So let me get you some amp readings on everything. And what I've got connected is nowhere near pushing what this unit is capable of doing. So I'll let this battery initiate charging. I'll try to get you some back-to-back -back readings uh, while we're charging. See, we went over to solar while this one's recovering. Works flawlessly. It's just just wonderful little piece of equipment. So let this kick back in right here. Let it stabilize for a second. 13 amps. And I'm going to get over here real quick on the lithium. See what the lithium's doing. Uh, 11. And so the numbers are changing because this is pulling this down quicker than what the alternator or solar panels can, can do. So 10.4. 12.8 to 13.5. So now let's see what the solar is going to do. So we shut our engine off. We parked our RV, all that good stuff. You know, we're, we're set up. Uh, we're on the sun now, charging with the sun. So I got the PV coming in here. We're charging on PV. All right, so here's the voltage coming in off the solar array right there. So let me clear the meter back out right here. I'll get you some amp readings because this unit has MPPT tracking on the solar side. Remember, we're disconnected from our alternator. So this is from the solar panels coming in. Let me get you a reading and we'll compare. So 8.6 amps at 19.88 volts. And then what are we putting into the lithium iron phosphate battery bank? 12.3 amps into the lithium iron phosphate battery bank at... 13.37 volts. Now, of course, these lower lower amperages on this thing is not even making it sweat. It's ice cold to the touch. This ain't even, this is nothing for this unit right here. 
little 10 and 12 amp readings coming in it's capable of way more than that all right now i'm going to simulate uh you know the sun the sun dropping out things like that so if you're you're parked and your sun goes away from your pv array rain clouds you got bad weather at your campsite no pv coming in put your batteries are getting low but you're you, know, you can crank up the engine right here so we'll crank up our engine again so give it a second you'll see this drop you'll see the amperage come up going to the lithium iron phosphate bank right there there we go climbing uh, pulling pretty good this time 17 18 19 20 amps 22 climbing climbing quick so there we go 25 amps dumped in there before we drug down this lead acid we got an alternator of course it would keep up with loads that oh, works good now let's check reverse charging feature on it all right i finally got the lead acid to drop below 12 volts and stay there i had to hook up another inverter on the lead acid and burn some energy off i've got a little small load on it to keep it down below 12 so the charge will activate on the reverse charge feature and there's the lithium battery bank right there 13.31 volts by the way and then 11.6 on the lead acid so now for reverse charge you come to the reverse charge switch hold it down all right reverse charge pulling from lithium back to lead acid watch the voltage rise and look at the amperage right here so that should float and there we should see our amperage drop once this battery comes up back to full state of charge all right the beeping has stopped and we reverse charge back so it's settled in now a little over 13 volts so the way the reverse charge feature works on this unit when you activate it it sees that the service or your excuse me your starter battery is below 12 volts and your service battery has to be above 12 and a half volts so it pulls energy from your service battery or house battery and puts it back to your starter battery so it doesn't leave you stranded like jesse and walter it's at the 10 amp rate and it's got a delay in it so when it sees it drop below 10 amps and it parameters for the float voltage and everything are met it cancels reverse charging so you can see right here the battery's back at 12.5 volts so very nice that reverse charge feature is awesome just in case you you did something to your rv or your your truck or whatever and you drain that starter battery down and you couldn't get it to go and you got juice left over in the the house batteries i love that feature that is so nice so yes i really like this power queen 40 amp dc dc charger there's so many uses for this thing rvs boats uh, off grid all kinds of use case scenarios for this little unit this is awesome to have multiple charging methods for your lithium iron phosphate battery banks just an awesome little little thing to have around very valuable asset i mean yeah very nice and just like all other power queen products they're very price competitive very high quality uh, right now at time of filming this unit is 149.99 on amazon with a coupon the coupons come and go so i've seen this down as low as in the 129 range and as high as the 159 range so just keep that in mind you know check your prices check their website sometimes their website has better deals than amazon i'll include links to both in the description and then just like their battery monitor right here in shunt very good quality on this unit usually at a lower price than the competitors so you know if you need a battery monitor and things like that i can highly recommend the power queen that's great it's very accurate i'll go over this more in an upcoming video and another use case scenario for this here's how i'm going to use it right here this is what i'm going to do with it wind turbine rectifier to a flooded lead acid and an agm bank i've got two i got vsrs all that stuff getting set up uh, i don't know which bank is going to be the main bank to take the hit from the wind turbine because that's choppy dc and it keeps the plates very happy in lead acid batteries so then i'll connect the power queen 40 amp dc to dc charger to this agm or flooded lead acid bank and also have the pv input coming into it going to a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery bank so that's the way i'm going to be using it this is a perfect way to use this in an off-grid situation i said that choppy wave keeps those happy and then that charger keeps the lithiums happy so awesome awesome little unit appreciate you power queen hooking me up with this and uh, y'all see this a lot more in upcoming videos hope you enjoyed it today thank y'all for watching take care and be safe